Have you ever been so furious at a government official that in your anger, you posted something on Facebook? Soon, you find yourself facing an online libel case. The question is, can you really go to jail for committing online libel? Hi, I'm Mike Navalio, Supreme Court Chief Communications Officer. Welcome to the Supreme Court Podcast. It's the 9th of August 2024, and today we talk about the case of People v. Suleiman, decided on April 25, 2023. With me is Tiff Atindido Beltran, Supreme Court Information Officer. Hi Tiff, so tell us, what do we know about the case of Homerito Suleiman? Hi everyone, hi Mike. Thanks for having me. So in 2018, Suleiman made a scathing post on Facebook, cussing and criticizing a certain Waldo Carpio, who was apparently the assistant secretary of the Department of Agriculture. He claimed Carpio took favors and unduly delayed the release of his sanitary and phytosanitary import clearance. Carpio sued him, and the regional trial court found Suleiman guilty of online libel. But instead of sending Suleiman to jail, the RTC imposed a fine, 50,000 pesos. Invoking Supreme Court Administrative Circular No. 08-2008, which permits the imposition of a fine rather than imprisonment in libel cases. Suleiman paid the fine and no longer appealed his conviction. So if Suleiman was convicted by the RTC and he paid the fine, why did this case reach the Supreme Court? The prosecution, through the Office of the Solicitor General, filed a petition for certiorari before the Court of Appeals claiming that the RTC committed grave abuse of discretion in imposing only a penalty of fine instead of imprisonment. The prosecution was saying, this is online libel. So under the Cybercrime Prevention Act, the penalty should be one degree higher, therefore not fine, but imprisonment. The Court of Appeals then denied the prosecution's petition, prompting it to go to the Supreme Court, reiterating the same argument. So how did the Supreme Court rule in this case? the Supreme Court affirmed the findings of the Court of Appeals and the RTC, dismissing the prosecution's petition. But the Court stressed that its review is limited to the question of whether the Court of Appeals was correct when it found that the RTC did not commit grave abuse of discretion in imposing the 50 peso fine only, instead of imprisonment higher by one degree. In short, can a court really just impose a fine instead of imprisonment? And it said yes. What happened to the argument of the prosecution distinguishing libel from online libel? Essentially saying that you can impose a fine only for traditional libel, but not on online libel. Well, the key difference between traditional libel and online libel is the medium through which it is committed. When you impute a crime, a vice, or a defect, that tends to dishonor a person or blacken the memory of a dead person through writing, print or radio, among others, well, that's traditional libel. But when you talk about online libel, that's done through information and communication technologies. Hang on, are the penalties of libel and online libel the same? So for libel, the penalty under the revised penal code is prison correctional in its minimum or medium periods, or a fine ranging from, you know, 40,000 pesos to 1.2 million pesos, or both. For online libel, the penalty under Section 6 of the Cybercrime Prevention Act is one degree higher than traditional libel, or libel under the Revised Penal Code. The court said that the language used in the Revised Penal Code, which uses the disjunctive word OR, recognizes that the penalty of fine may be imposed as a single or alternative penalty for libel. So for traditional libel, a fine can be imposed instead of imprisonment. Right, but what does this mean for the penalty for online libel? Can you also impose one degree higher for a fine? The court actually said yes. It held that the prosecution erroneously assumed that only imprisonment may be increased or decreased by degrees under the revised penal code. So as a result, the mandatory penalty for online libel is imprisonment only. The court cited Article 75 of the revised penal code which states that the penalty of fine may be increased or decreased by degrees of one-fourth of the maximum amount set by law without changing the minimum. Now, how do we implement this? I mean, how do you increase the fine by one degree? 
This is how we do it. We divide the maximum amount of the fine or libel, which is 1.2 million pesos, into four parts. This gives us a degree amounting to 300,000 pesos. Mm, so that's for traditional libel. But what about online libel? To determine the penalty for online libel, which is one degree higher, 300,000 must be added to the maximum amount for traditional libel, which means the maximum amount of fine for online libel shall be um, 1.5 million pesos with a minimum amount of 40,000 pesos unchanged in accordance to Article 75 of the Revised Penal Code. This gives us the range of fine for online libel, which is from 40,000 pesos to 1.5 million pesos. Now, let's check if the fine imposed by the RTC on Suleiman is within this range. The RTC imposed a fine of 50,000 pesos on Suleiman. This is within the range of fine imposable for online libel. Hmm, good math, Biff. <laughs> so, so does this mean that the guidelines in the Supreme Court Administrative Circular setting a preference for imposing fines instead of imprisonment applies to online libel, not just to traditional libel cases? Um, there's this argument that it seems like the Supreme Court in issuing the circular is actually replacing the legislative intent in the revised penal code, which also imposes the alternative penalty of imprisonment. Actually, the court said the guidelines do not replace the legislative intent behind the imposition of a higher degree of penalty in online libel. It is careful to emphasize that it does not remove imprisonment as an alternative penalty. But the court did remind judges that in using the guidelines, they should consider the peculiar circumstances of each case. You know, determine whether the imposition of a fine alone would best serve the interest of justice, or whether or not imposing imprisonment would depreciate the seriousness of the offense, or contrary to the imperatives of justice. So in Solomon's case, the court found that the circumstances surrounding the defamatory Facebook post are similar to one of the circumstances under the guidelines, specifically that he was animated by anger and his perception that Assistant Secretary Carpia was provoking him by his allegedly intentional delay in releasing his clearance. Given this, the court ruled there was no grave abuse of discretion on the part of the RTC in imposing on Suleiman a penalty of just a fine. Hmm, right, so it all boils down to the court's appreciation, right? Um, but it's clear that the court can impose a fine or imprisonment for both traditional and libel cases. So good discussion, Tiff. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everyone. And if you wish to read the full text of the court's decision, you can go to the Supreme Court website. Just search for People vs. Suleiman, GR number 256700. It's an unbanked decision penned by Associate Justice Antonio T. Co. Jr. And that's our podcast this week. Join us again next time for a detailed discussion of select cases decided by the Supreme Court. I'm Mike Navalio, your Supreme Court Chief Communications Officer. You can catch this podcast on the Supreme Court Public Information Office's X and YouTube accounts.